New South Wales side has taken out the women's taplin. Been dominated north of the border. To see the Terry Gold girls come through uh, was just magnificent. Also seeing uh, New South Wales taking out the Open Women's Board Rescue before and noticing through a lot of these events that the actual New South Wales teams are really coming through this year, which have been a little bit lacking over the last couple of years. The Queenslanders have been doing so well. You'll have to be a genius to knock over Tugan and uh, Northcliffe here, though. This Tugan side, a couple of years ago when they won their first, only one of them was a senior. They were all babies. They were, they were all juniors. Well, they're still, they're still babies, John. They're, uh, I think, the oldest guys. There's 20, 22, maybe 23 years of age. The rest of them are all 20. You can see uh, Troy Hipwood lining up for Tugan starting the league. I know he's 21st in a couple of weeks because I'm invited. Interestingly, um, Jimmy before called Tim Peach, one of the Ironmen from Mooloolaba, a veteran. And Tim Peach, I think, is about 22. So, look, there's no hope for yeah, any of us. Trev and I don't feel too good about that. And, and you've got the likes of Nathan Bagley, of course, the uh, the, the Olympian and, and world champion uh, kayak paddler going around for Northcliffe, and we'll pick them up in a moment for you. The other thing to mention in this race it is, is the same order again as the Ironman and Iron Women. All weekend it's going to be ski, board, swim with the men. There's two ski paddlers, two board paddlers, two swimmers. One of those two swimmers for Tugan is Kai Hurst, who next week is going to try and qualify for the Athens Olympics in the Australian Stillwater Swim Championships. And I'm told that he went 152 off the blocks at the end of training without a, without a taper, no shave, done nothing just last week for a 200 freestyle. That is flying. That's an incredible time. And there's no doubt Kai Hurst could knock off the surf race too if he wants to be in it. And that's up to him and Dennis Cottrell with the potholes on the edge. You know, it's great watching the start of this race because when you see the Ironman start, you're seeing some of the best Ironmen in the world um, taking off on the ski. The difference when you see the Taplin start, it's the best ski paddlers and some of the best kayak paddlers in the world jumping on. And it's just electrifying how quick they get going. It certainly is, Trevor. You can really see the power here in the guys. It, they have a look at the starters first up. Ter Terrigal, as we know, uh, Avoca, North Burley, Manly. A couple of Northcliffe clubs as we'll see uh, them as we go over the page. Queenscliff will give themselves some chance of being up there around the middle. The Tugan A, a crew are the, the, uh, the team to beat, little doubt about that. Uh, Northcliff A, as we've already mentioned, the likes of Nathan Bagley paddling for them. And then there's Maruchidor as well. And, uh, and Maruchidor traditionally very strong in this. Clint Robinson not paddling today. No, Clint not paddling. I like the look of Cronulla also and Queenscliff. Queenscliff have got this real feel about him at the moment, and who knows what they could pull out. Now, that's Nathan Bagley. Uh, that's Northcliff A, and uh, out in front at the moment. And uh, Nicholas Crilly is also uh, paddling for them as well. Uh, that's Troy Hipwood in uh, second place there for Chugan. And Hipwood is part of that Chugan A crew that uh, contains Doherty, Hamilton, uh, the two Hearst brothers, and of course Kenny Wallace. And what a what a paddler he is! When you Hipwood handing over to Wallace, yeah, a couple of young guys, very strong for such young guys. I mean, uh, Trevor, I don't remember being that strong at 20 years of age. No, certainly not. We were little whippets back then, but. Uh, the great thing about this field, once again, we saw it in the board rescue, is we see Nathan Bagley sprinting for this wave, or Northcliffe sprinting for this wave, and he may, he'll get over that, and Chugan will be on the next wave behind. And through so many of these races today, we've seen the favourites actually racing out in front together, and we talked about it, Northcliffe and Chugan, and where are they, first and second? I know Nathan Bagley on screen there is a former K1-1000 uh, world champion, so you know the standard here is very high. And he's heading to Athens, of course, as well to compete. So uh, in, I think both the K1-1000 and the K1-500, I think. Uh, yeah, he just uh, cleaned up. That's actually not Nathan on screen, but he just cleaned up at the kayaks in both K1s and also teamed up with Clint Robinson yeah. to win the K2 yeah. as well. It's a Nathan special will, effort. Nathan will paddle with the glasses. That's Nick Crilly to switch the order. One thing that you can do, too, is you can switch the order even after the race has started. That's right, that's the great thing about the tap one. It can be a real cloak and dagger affair. You can hide what your team order is going to be, and when the other teams are looking around to see who's going to go first, you can switch it at the last second. This is Nick Crilly, a so, great young ski paddler. So he'll hand over to Bagley, and, and of course, as we know, uh, Kenny Wallace will be paddling as well. So it's Northcliff A from uh, Queenscliff, and then Northcliff B. So uh, Crilly, do the big leap. He'll smack Bagley, and out they'll go. Once upon a time, you used to see the ski paddlers running around. Of course, in the Ironman, they're running as fast as they can in a transition. Once upon a time, the tapple and the ski paddlers were such ski paddling specialists that they were hopeless running around, big guys. Nowadays, you've got to run super fast as well, and they do. Yeah, you get you know, Big Tank Bennett with those massive thighs running for man. You remember him in the 80s. And, and these days, of course, they're all a foot taller and just fly across the sand. That's no, right. no disrespect, Tank, if you're listening. <laughs> no, Tank was fantastic in the Taplins for Manly. But you really do 
do when you pick a taplin team these days. It's all about not only the paddling, but the running. See Nathan Bagley uh, there just taking it out for Northcliffe A. Look at the stroke rate on there. That's incredible, isn't it? He just really flies. We see him there with the Oakley sunglasses on, and he's just fanging out. And right behind him, is that uh, Northcliffe B? Or it's Kenny no, Wallace. It's not Kenny Wallace has come through. What about that? Kenny it's Wallace, interesting. W World K1500 champion, junior champion, uh, quite a few years ago. Chasing the former Open champion, so it's uh, it's an interesting comparison. Yeah, yeah. so it's a great matchups happening. Bagley and Wallace, so uh, Tugan are, are really close enough to strike. There's no doubt about that when they, you look at the strength of their swimmers to come. Queenscliff actually sitting in third. The depth of Northcliffe uh, this year has been incredible. Uh, it will be an interesting reflection here in the in the Taplin with the men's to see how they do go and when you compare what the lineup for Chugan. Let's get to Jimmy Walker. Jimmy. Nathan just coming around the can now. He's not looking anywhere other than getting to the second can. He is focused, but Kenny Wallace, not a bad paddle behind him, but Nathan Smith, uh, Nathan Bagley, sorry, the world 500 metre K1 champion, looking superb. Waitley turns his second can and third can. No one will get near him. The rating will come up, he'll look fast. So turning around now, it's Kenny Wallace looking very aggressive. I mean, he's going to tag six of all to uh, Kai Her. So anywhere close to Northcliffe now is a great effort by him. OK, so turning these cans and starting to pick up these runners. Here's Bagley pulling down on one now. Really following those runners. You can see him on the right-hand side of the screen there. And the swell building behind him, that's not going to pick up Ken Wallace from Chugan, but it will pick up Nathan Bagley. These skis pick up just about anything, let alone a swell of that size. He doesn't have a very big deflector on the front of that Gibbon ski, but he's got down the front, no problems. The nose hasn't been buried. If he can keep it straight, he's set his club up very well here. And he has. Marvellous shot too from our uh, guys out there on the jet ski. I think Dwayne Thighs is busy driving that former Ironman champion as well. He'll uh, have to stay out in front of this section of whitewash as it breaks again. And uh, a big lead, but Tugan not that far behind when you consider that swim is last. And, and the amount of time that they're going to spend in the water in that swim league, you could really make a difference in terms of uh, swimming them down as uh, Kenny Wallace uh, comes through. Now, there's a massive wave out the back too, just quietly. This really is a special event. We talked about the Board Rescue being an event that really epitomises life-saving. The Taplin Relay epitomises the club strength. The two best ski paddlers you can find in your club, the two best board paddlers, and then finishing up with the two best swimmers, and some Olympic-class athletes in this field. It is a special indication of how strong a club is. You saw Nathan Bagley just missed the turning marker there. You know, valuable seconds. Kenny Wallace can run on that beach, so, uh, you know, they'll be trying everything to close that gap. And we'll uh, pick up the third and fourth for you in a moment. Cronulla and Queenslip were both there about, but there was a big wave that was taken and uh, a number of them lost it. That On that occasion, though, that was a great bit of work from Cronulla. He knew he'd slewed, he knew he was off, and he's dived straight onto the uh, the white water. And then got cleaned up by the next, maybe his ski or somebody else's yeah, actually Arla cleaned him up. Andy style. Yeah, can't that, remember that ski happening. That was a glorious bit of surfing, though. You just, the skills of these guys are just incredible. It shows you the fortunes of the surf. So many times we've seen someone in front get knocked back and then end up in front again. Just then, he fell off the ski, stayed on the wave body surfing, and then got wiped out by someone else's ski. Turns around all the time in the surf. So Northcliffe and Tugan, there's not a lot between them now. Tugan have won it the last few years, have had an absolute mortgage on this event. Tugan always... Tugan on, Tugan on the right, Northcliffe on the left. They seem to rise to the occasion in this tap on relay. They're a really strong team unit. But remember, right now, they're chasing the Northcliffe board paddler, the world champion, Paul Wotherspoon. Certainly is a big paddler to chase, and uh, the Chugan paddler there is doing a, a mighty job just to, uh, just to hold that gap. Just to stick with him, the old thing with the Queensland state of origin, they always say Queenslanders grow another foot taller when they pull on the jersey. I think it's the same for the Chugan guys and the Northcliffe guys. They seem to be so much better when you put them in a tap on relay. They really excel. We've been beating you blokes up in state of origin lately. It'd be amazing how you'd go if you didn't grow that other foot taller. <laughs> So here they are, the Tugan boys, and uh, as we've already stressed, another board, board paddle to go, and then handing over to the two Hearst boys for the swim. The Tugan paddler has had, had a blinder. I think it's Hugh Doherty there, um, and he's closing the gap on the, on the uh, Northcliffe competitor, so that's a, that's a great paddle. 
Jimmy Walker's alongside him. Jimmy? Yeah, there's a little bit more than a board length in it now. I think if Tugan doesn't hurry up, Northcliffe have got enough lead to turn around and possibly get on the first run, which could turn on to get, could possibly turn on to the getting a wave in front. And I know Tugan are going to swim with Kai Hurst, but I don't, I don't think he can get lose that big a lead going into the board. But he's laying down the Tugan fella. I think it is Hugh Doherty's back. Northcliffe pulling away. He's got a runner. He's got a run. It's turned into about three or four board lengths. Yeah, look at that. Just falling off the back of that run now. He'll look over his shoulder. We'll get to Pete on the beach shortly, but we'll just uh, see as they come through this wave section. Now, Tugan trying to pull over the top of that one, but, of course, as he drops back, uh, at the very least, the Northcliffe competitor, Witherspoon's going to pick that up and get another 20 or 30 metre run out of it and then look over his shoulder to see whether there is a wave forming. Now, they're getting into the wave areas now. Haven't had a lot of luck. This little one should be enough, actually, and it'll be a nice size to hold if he can pull down it. Now, Kenny, over he goes. Yes, he will, and that'll be enough to hold to the beach, and that'll be a good lead as we go down to the beach and Pete Calhoun. And a man who was riding every minute on that wave is Nathan Batley, who set this up. How are they travelling well? Oh, mate, we're winning at this stage, but it's far from over. Anyone knows the, the nature of this event? It is not over till it's over. We're leading at this stage, but we've got two important legs to come up. We've got Sugar right now tail, and they've got Kai Hurst as their last swimmer, so it's far from over. <laughs> Very anxious competitors looking on, John. And why wouldn't they be? And uh, would, you would have to think that the two crews that are out there in front in normal conditions would fight this out. But look, anything can happen on the way back out in this board leg. Well, also my mistake, it's actually Paul Wotherspoon coming up next in the board leg. So you've got the world champion about to go now. That makes it dangerous for, for Chugan. They don't want to let this fella get too far ahead because remember in the swimming, you've got Luke Richmond. Yeah, he can swim a bit too. He, he can swim a bit. We talk a lot about Kai Hurst, who's really in a class of his own, but Luke Richmond's a pretty special man when it comes to lacing on the togs and swimming out through these waves. Gee, this is a massive lead, though. I'm just looking back out to see, uh, to the other competitors, uh, the, the next group of competitors, the next three, are just beginning to pull down. One of them's going to hold it, pull down a little wave now. You'll probably see him come into screen in a minute as the other two. There he is. That's the third place getter at the moment. That's uh, Northcliffe B coming through. Tell you what, I've spent a lot of time and uh, I know Sam Hamilton at the moment. He is only a young guy but a very, very dynamic, fast paddler and he's actually close to cap at the start of this board lift. Yeah, we talk a lot about Kai Hurst and, and the effect he's had on Chugan. Young guys like Sam Hamilton have set these guys up so many times. Here we see fourth place coming up. That's Northcliffe B coming around for fourth. And as we talked about before, they're not saving themselves for another leg of the Ironman. When they get around this and tag the next paddler, they're finished. So they are sprinting. And that's Bulleye and then Malula Bar. So there's uh, third, fourth and fifth for you. Malula Bar in a great position there. But Northcliffe and Chugan a long way out in front with really the two, the four strongest swimmers probably to go. Yeah, these two clubs have got a massive lead over third place. It is quite an impressive uh, lineup when you think they're only part of the way into the fourth leg of a six leg event. Yeah, it really does. It shows you when you start focusing on like a team gets so many good competitors together and they get a real belief in themselves that they can do something special. When you've got two teams like that, you've got a ding dong race a mile in front of everybody else. Great example is Chugan, young guys, you've got superstars in there and some no name guys in there as well and they all lift and have fantastic performances. So there's Wotherspoon lying down at this stage as he's making his way towards the cans and uh, up on his knee, the, the Tugan paddler appears to be making some ground. Now why would Paul be lying down at this stage? I'm not really sure. To, to be perfectly honest, looking at those guys, that doesn't look like a Taplin pace. That to me that doesn't look like how fast you'd paddle aboard. It's more like what you see Dean Mercer paddle aboard. It's erratic, it's flat out. When you're in a Taplin relay, it's a lot shorter than a board race and you should just put absolutely everything into it. Paul Wotherspoon laying down, the Tugan guy Stroking fairly slow. I would have thought they would have been going a lot harder than that. But Jimmy, this Tugan competitor is going to tack on, the, on his uh, tail right here. Yeah, the second competitor, I thought there for a minute that uh, he wouldn't get near the Northcliffe guy, but just, just in the last foot length and a half, though, he caught up. But Northcliffe has realised his mistake, I think, but he's lifted the rating. He's lifted the rating, and there's a big chance he'll pull away on a wave on his own. Here comes the wave. Northcliffe are going to get away on their own again. Yeah, there's the wave. Now, will he be able to pull down this? I don't think he will, and, uh, well, who knows? Another five metres had he lifted the rating earlier because uh, the Tugan competitor, who's uh, going a little bit further south, 
as you can see there on that shot on the on the yellow board is the Tukin competitor. He's, he's getting away. a run that's going to come straight past him. See he's going to pick Hamilton. up that wave. See you later, alligator. Oh, I'm off. I've gone. I've gone south. I've picked up where the wave is. What a paddle from Sam Hamilton. He's gone in behind the uh, the former world champion. Outclassed him in, in terms of reading the surf. I know Sam, maybe he's been around a few times today and uh, he's not particularly fresh, although Paul has had a few uh, few hard finals today. But, uh, mate, that's a killer a killer break they've just put on the field. Absolutely it is, and a, and a really great piece of thinking. And uh, That's well, gone to more than two waves now, Harks. Yeah, I was just about to say, Wutherspoon's dropped off the, uh, the back of the wave behind and he's now three waves behind as he finally falls on one. And they're about to hand over to a couple of pretty ordinary swimmers. <laughs> What can you say? D Hurst and K Hurst. D Hurst and K Hurst. You can say no more, pretty much. Dane Hurst has been in sensational form. We saw him swim the field down in the Ironman semi. And then you hand over to Kai Hurst, who is not just a special swimmer, but he is so special in the surf. Well, like we said before, there's a couple of superstars in here with Kai Hurst and his brother swimming. But uh, some of these young guys, Sam Hamilton, Hugh Doherty, are names to look out for in the future. Absolutely. Here we go. We see Paul Weatherspoon running around second place. It's going to be a while before we call third place coming around. But Paul Weatherspoon, still the current world champion and uh, he'll be uh, defending that in Italy this year in about September and hands over to Mark Williams. Not a bad swimmer either. Mark Williams not running around as much as he has been in the last few years, not really going for it as much but I tell you what, several times world champion and the current world surf race champion so let's not forget about him. Well let's take a break and see how this pans out when Kai Hurst will be on the in the water on the other side. Behind him, Hayden Smith in the battle for uh, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. And they are a long, long, long way behind the battle for first and second, which is already out there in the ocean. And uh, talking about being a long way behind, Dane Hurst uh, was more than the length of the cans in front. Yeah, which seemed to equate to more than the lead he had, because obviously when you run into the water, you virtually stop. So some, while someone else is running around, that distance shortens when you go into the swim league. So he's obviously done a very good swim going out through this break. He's trying to get that little runner there. He's going to turn it around here. But still, the lead isn't big enough to negate the swells. He, he needs to be lucky to, to pick up a wave. Will this one form for him? No, it won't. He'll get a runner off it, but he's not going to be able to pull down it. Again, like we've talked about all day, the no man's land. You come past, you don't pick a wave up first thing. As soon as you get into that back break, you're into that deeper water, and you risk the chance of the, the person coming in from behind. So uh, it's a very risky time right and now. And here we do it. Right now, this is going to happen. Tugan is looking out now at Northcliffe coming down a wave. Yep, Northcliffe have a wave behind behind him he's going to try and move over and position himself to be able to pull side down it, by side and he can't so they'll be next to each other I'll tell you what very lucky there that wave filled up for Tugan and uh, and they've actually drawn alongside it quite well have, could have carried Mark Williams right through to the beach look at that now you talk about matchups look at what we're going to see in a moment we're about to Luke see Luke Richmond, Richmond versus Kai Hurst I've seen these guys lapping up and down the pool of Miami and uh, you know there's not a hell of a lot in it although Kai is in absolutely fantastic form at the moment I have to say Kai Hurst is, oh here we go, this is Northcliffe, have picked this wave up. This is Mark Williams, no it's Chugan. Dane Hurst yeah. has picked this wave up. Dane Hurst picked it up broken. You talk about great surfing, yeah, I've seen, exceptionally difficult to do. I've seen the Hurst boys, they are exceptionally strong and they can accelerate and put this big kick on and, uh, and that's what you really need to do to pick I, a broken wave. In, in, in terms of their, their, their body shape and so forth, that's Riddington like, that's what it reminds you of, the way Riddo would pick up broken wave. Yeah, Riddo used to do that all the time and I suppose with Dane Hurst, he's, he's a chunky guy but he's got such a uh, feel for the water, he's got such a presence in the water that you're able to pick up those waves. Mark Williams, quite heavy later in his career, maybe tiring on the way in there, wave just went straight out the top of him. And this will be enough of a break unfortunately to negate that head-to-head -head battle between uh, Kai Hurst and Luke Richmond, but Kai knows, that, and what, what about how much he's trimmed down in the last year as well as he's got strictly into the, the pool swimming. Kai still knows though that Richmond's going to be close enough, particularly through this transition here, that he can't possibly take it easy. He has to go hell for leather until that wave section. Look, you have to say what's special about Kai Hurst is Mark Williams comes around to tag Luke Richmond and he's hurting. Luke Richmond will chase off after Kai Hurst. You would think Kai Hurst is going to put distance into Luke Richmond just on the swimming side because he is so special, but also he has this ability to catch waves. Kai uh, knows there's only one way to go and that's flat chat. Now this is this broken wave that was picked up by Dane Hurst. There's a very, very special bit of surfing. One of the hardest things you can do in, uh, in, in swimming in the surf is pick up a broken wave. Probably the hardest thing. Particularly guy, 
at the at the end of a swim league, you know, when you're hurting, when you put everything into it, to actually get your body stiff enough and hard enough to get onto this, spring onto that wave yeah. is difficult. Yeah, go out go out tomorrow at home and, and at, at your local beach and have a go at it and, and then think about the effort you've just put in to swim 450 metres on the way through to get there. As I was saying before, Kai knows only one way to go and that's flat chat and what he wants to do is get around and get either pick up a wave first or get across that, that dead zone that we've been looking at all day and assure this win. He can still lose this race if uh, if Luke's to get one from out the back. And given the dangers of, you know, potholes, calf injuries, those sorts of things, it's a big harder thing for Kai to do to turn up and swim here today, given what he's put in to make the Athens Olympic team, and that that goes on the line only next week. It's a real sign of where he is in his preparation that Dennis Cottrell and, and Kai were very seriously thinking about not racing here. That shows you how close Kai Hurst is to the mark. Dennis Cottrell has the greatest 1500 metre swimmer of all time swimming in that squad, so he knows how fast you need to go. And he's saying to Kai, go easy, because you're right in the box seat at the moment. Yeah, well that, you know, he v Stevens, yep. both of them could go around the 15 minute mark, and it's gonna be a, you know, an amazing battle to see who gets that second spot. Yep. It's, it's, it's quite uh, impressive when you think about the amount of Olympians and potential Olympians we've actually got here in the surf life saving titles. It just shows you the standard of the athletes that are here. It does. A great little shot we had there of Kai Hurst as he was diving under the waves. You can see it right now, that is fantastic. Every chop you'll see him, he sticks his head down and actually almost streamlines. There he goes, see, and he kicks his feet. He's not swimming underwater. He's por like, almost like porpoising through the little chops. That's yeah. a sign of a fantastic swimmer. When you see him, he's not actually stroking. He's using his legs to drive forward. He's always moving forward. Yeah, get that bit. Just, just pump, pump out that big six-speed kick. And away he goes. Let's that just see how, how big this lead is as we pan back now to try and find Luke Richmond. So there's Kai Hurst. Where exactly is Luke Richmond? Well, he's right. There he is on the left there. screen. So it's, well, we'll go to Jimmy and, and ask him. It looks the best part of 100 metres to us. Jimmy Walker. It's definitely a good part of 100 metres. He's still back in the break zone. It's not often in a tap on relay, you can say, that you're going to shut the gate. But what a pleasure it is to see before the national championships. Guy Hurst swimming the back of the swim cans of Surf Life Saving Nationals with an eight beat kick, not a six beat. He is powering. If you had a look at him up close, there was no way Luke Richmond was going to get close. And no disrespect to uh, Luke Richmond, but I'm going to see him go round the last can and head to shore. And a wave. I'm over my shoulder, and I'll tell you where Luke Richmond is. He's about 20 metres from turning the first can. So, uh, Chigan, gold medal. That's the difference between what we saw with Dane earlier and Mark Williams. It was a can's length. A similar lead going into this. Kai Hurst has put another 20 or 30 metres into that and now he comes back into the wave area. The only danger in this wave area is it's such a broad field, but there's so many swells coming through. Look at this. This is Kai Hurst. He won't miss this. You no. see some good body surfing here. You're about to see it. Oh, in the tube. But has he held it? Let's see whether he can pop out there. It was a very difficult wave, the way it, way it broke over the top of it. He's on it. There you go. <laughs> oh, he said before, the stiffness of the body, the kicking, these guys, the Hearst brothers, along with them, there's quite a few other great body surfers here, but these two guys, with some of the ways I've seen them hold, it's quite impressive. And let's see whether he picks this up broken. He, he doesn't have to put the, enough effort in to do it, I suppose. He knows he's a long way in front, but uh, they are as good as anyone you've ever seen body surf, the, 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 these two boys. Oh, they certainly are. Kai Hurst, if he does go in the surf race, and if he does win, it'll be his fourth in a row, and that will equal the great in surf life-saving circles, Bobby Newbigin, yeah. and that is an all-time record. And of course, he's thinking about not going for that record because he's in the box seat for the Olympics. Luke Richmond has, uh, has swum into a bit of a lull here, and uh, as he now starts to approach this wave area, uh, but Kai, he's on, a, on another little wave, uh, down here on the water's edge, he's going to well take his time about running up. He, he, no the worst worry. thing in the world now would be if he if he did twist an ankle or do a, do a calf in a pothole. Let's reflect for a moment. These guys are about to win their third uh, straight Taplin final, and uh, very happy indeed. And the two before that was won by uh, Northcliffe. Wow, and Northcliffe, Luke Richmond has just taken off on a wave out the back as Kai, Re Kai Hurst runs up the beach. That's the dip, the distance. That's the gap. No hurry here. Look at him. That's fantastic. <laughs> Hurst. Will we see him on the Seven Network in Athens as well, swimming for a medal in the 1500 freestyle by the end of next week? We'll probably know. He's in the Cottrell squad. Will we see him tomorrow? Well, Pete Calhoun will ask him in a moment in terms of that open surf race. 
what a competitor, what an athlete. And this is a famous victory in terms of surf life saving. Three open taplins in succession. What a team. These guys are you know, barely over 20, the, the, the whole team there. So uh, and they've already got three titles in a row under their belt. You have to say they're a champion team, don't you? As Luke Richmond gets up now and uh, makes his way towards the finish line. It's a, uh, a long, long wait for third and fourth, how dominant these two teams have been. And as we've already pointed out, Nathan Bagley, world, uh, world champion in the, uh, the kayaks, and also a, a man that we'll see on the Seven Network at the Olympics. Like well, we said before, John, uh, the last five Taplin Open titles between these first and second place teams, so uh, they obviously are dominant, and uh, as you can see, the distance back to third. Well, after the congratulations, Pete Calhoun, we'd like to know whether Kai Hurst is going around tomorrow. Well, I'll ask him that in a moment, but Kai, uh, two years ago, it was a young team, you cracked it for a win, you defended it last year. To win a hat-trick of Taplin Relays is phenomenal. It's insane. What can I say, mate? These boys are awesome, and... Uh, Without these guys in my team, you know, we definitely couldn't have done what we did today. And three years in a row just shows how strong Shugan is and uh, the depth of it. Well, these guys have managed to get their breath back and they're smiling, so congratulations, guys. Let me ask you, though, mate, that gives you another hint at gold. Can we see you going around the surf race tomorrow? I don't know. It depends on the surf conditions, but at this stage, I probably won't. I'm looking forward to the Olympic trials, though. There's bigger priorities, John, but congratulations to Shugan. Triple crown winners. Well done. Woo! And there's uh, Marucci Dor in a battle with Bulleye for the third place. Bulleye are also on that wave. So Marucci Dor and Bulleye will be battling it out for third. But what about this for a piece of surfing? Well, you don't need any words. Now the pictures say it all. We'll be back on the other side of this to uh, wrap it all up as Bulleye take out third place in the open Taplin Relay.